The morning dew clung to my boots as I trekked through the overgrown forest path, guided only by the fading light of my smartphone's dying battery. I strained my eyes scanning the underbrush, searching for any signs of the elusive lady's slipper orchid that had been rumored to grow in this part of the woods. As a botanist and avid flower enthusiast, I live for the thrill of discovering rare breeds in their natural habitats. The lady's slipper was exceptionally unique, its pouch-shaped petals resembling a medieval shoe. I had to see it for myself. Most thought I was crazy for venturing this deep into the forest alone, but my sheer excitement blinded me to any potential risks. I had hiked over seven miles into the thicket, far past the designated trails. The farther I went, the more the land appeared untouched by humankind. It felt primeval, like I had stepped into a forgotten world. Around midday, I stopped to rest and eat a protein bar, taking swigs from my water bottle. The shade from the ancient pines provided a brief respite. Their knurled bark and wreathing branches curved toward the sky, filtering shafts of sunlight. As I stood up to continue onward, movement caught my eye. A few yards ahead, a critter skittered under a log, disappearing into the underbrush. My heart leaped. Based on its fur coloration, it looked to be a very rare species of woodland vole, thought to have gone extinct in this region decades ago. Adrenaline coursed through my veins. If the vole was here, perhaps the elusive orchid would be nearby too. I quickly packed up and headed onward, re-energized by the possible discovery. I trekked for another hour, paying close attention to my surroundings, before I started to feel the forest closing in around me. The path had gradually disappeared, leaving me to bushwhack through thick groves of holly bushes and tangled fallen branches. Thorny vines clawed at my clothes and skin as I squeezed between the trees. Glancing at my phone, my heartbeat quickened. No signal. The battery icon flashed red. It would be dead within minutes. Panic bubbled up in my chest. I had planned to use the GPS to retrace my steps out of here before nightfall. Frantically, I tried to get my bearings and head west toward where I had entered the woods. But in my haste, I hadn't paid attention to nearby landmarks. Each direction looked the same. Endless rows of massive tree trunks obscured by underbrush. I was lost. The very woods I'd romanticized now closed in on me like a labyrinth whose gate had permanently locked behind me. Fighting the urge to cry, I picked a direction and kept walking, hoping I might get lucky. The phone screen blinked off. Any last remnants of sunlight disappeared as dusk settled over the forest. The hooting of a nearby owl made me jump. I shivered, suddenly aware of how cold it had become. In the fading light, every tree took on a sinister persona. Crooked branches morphed into bony claws reaching out to ensnare me. I stumbled on, hyperventilating. When through the trees, I spotted a small clearing. My heart thrilled. Maybe I could start a fire, keep the animals at bay. I crawled on hands and knees through a narrow gap between briars, shredding my jeans and skinning my knees. Finally, I emerged onto nothing. The forest simply dropped off where I stood, falling away into a sheer rock face split by a sharp ravine. Miles across from me stood the mountains, an impassable barrier. There was no way down from here that I could see. The nearest climbable slope lay a half day's hike in either direction. Terror paralyzed my body momentarily. I had to force myself to breathe, blinking back hot tears of frustration. I was well and truly screwed. Even if I picked a direction to hike for help once daylight came, there was no guarantee I would find a way out before my food and water ran out. Exhausted and demoralized, I retreated back into the thicket near the cliffside, searching for material to start a fire. If I could make it through the night, morning would bring clarity. But darkness had fully enveloped the woods. I scraped my hands raw against the forest floor, just trying to find some dry tinder and logs. The thin beam of my headlamp caught the eyes of unseen creatures watching from the underbrush. I could hear them scurrying and snarling at the edges of the light. Unnerved, I desperately scraped together a makeshift fire pit with loose stones and dead branches. Shaky hands finally sparked the kindling alight. I nearly wept in relief as I held my numb hands over the nascent flames. Crouching close, I fed the fire, savoring its warmth and comfort. 
I was not alone out here. Not yet. As I opened another protein bar, the firelight illuminated a massive spider web strung between two trees a few feet away. Instinctively, I lurched backwards, only for my hair to catch on another web behind me. I clawed at the sticky fibers entangling my ponytail as the fat spider descended toward my face. Disgusted, I snapped branches off the trees in panic, trying to break free. Finally, the webs tore loose, and I collapsed to my knees, hyperventilating. Spiders skittered under every leaf and log surrounding me now that I paid attention. There was no escape. I couldn't even flee the firelight without being consumed by them. I stoked the flames higher, determined not to let it go out. The night stretched on endlessly. With nothing but the firelight to hold back the writhing darkness, my imagination wandered unchecked. Shadows in the shapes of beasts seemed to encircle me just outside the fire's reach. I dared not sleep, instead watching the woods through wide, dry eyes. I bored my gaze into the shadows, trying to make out if the sinuous shapes were real or figments of my increasingly addled mind. Over the endless hours, faces began to take form in the gnarled bark and knots of trees nearby. They scowled, howling silently at me, mouths twisted into anguished expressions. Shuddering, I hid my face in my arms. I had to hold on to my sanity. Morning would come soon. But when the pale light of dawn filtered through at last, my heart sank. The surrounding forest looked just as wild and impenetrable as the night before. Hiking out on my own was suicide. Still, remaining here was certain death. I packed up my gear robotically, scattering the remnants of my fire. As I stamped it out, a glint of color caught my eye from the edge of the ashes. A single charred orchid bloom lay among the coals, seared petals still clinging to a broken stem. Relief coursed through me. After everything, it was real. The lady slipper did exist here after all. Gently, I picked up the fragile flower and tucked it into my pocket. I wasn't leaving just yet, not while these elusive orchids still grew here. This one bloom gave me new strength. There had to be more, maybe even whole patches deeper in the woods. I slipped between the trees with renewed purpose, tracing a route along the cliff edge. Moss clung to the damp, rocky outcroppings nourished by the faint mist that swirled up from the ravine below. Perfect conditions for rare orchids. The morning passed in a euphoric haze as I explored deeper into the woods than any human had set foot before. By early afternoon, a stark realization jarred me. I had gone too far. The rocky cliffs had curved, leaving the ravine behind. Once more, the forest surrounded me on all sides like an endless labyrinth. Panic rising... I turned back the way I'd come, only to be met by a solid wall of trunks and foliage. No gaps marked the path I'd taken. I crashed through the underbrush, tearing my clothes and skin on the briars until I collapsed, sobbing. There was no way out. Delirious, I curled up on the damp forest floor as darkness settled over the woods once more. No longer did I have the energy to make a fire, to ward off the eyes of the creatures watching me. Hallucinations swirled as my empty stomach cramped. The gnarled tree trunks and hanging vines warped into grasping claws and gaping maws poised to devour me. I lay paralyzed by visions of beasts lurking behind veils of shadows and moonlight who would soon come to tear the flesh from my bones. But as the darkness reached its peak, no beast came. No spider sank its fangs into my neck. No snake coiled around my throat. The forest simply watched waiting patiently for my heart to slow, my lungs to still. I awoke to pale dawn once more. How many days had it been now since I had entered the woods? No longer did mundane concepts like time hold meaning. There was only the forest, ancient and never-ending, and myself within it. Like the woods, I too felt myself transforming shedding the trappings of my humanity to become like the creatures lurking at the edges of my vision, sustained only by sheer animal instinct. When the hunger grew too fierce to bear, I tore at the raw flesh of toads and rodents with hands and teeth. Their blood ran down my throat, hot and visceral. Strength and exhilaration flooded my veins with each kill. I grew lean and feral, 
senses honed to track any small movements of prey through the underbrush. My nails lengthened into claws, feet and hands calloused against the damp earth as I bounded on all fours. Nights were spent curled in hollow logs, hissing at shadows until exhaustion overtook me. My clothes rotted away, bearing flesh streaked with mud and dried gore. The woods became my home. Within its lush green bosom, I finally understood that I would never leave. There was only the cycle of dark and light, of hunger and satiation, the hunt and the kill. Some small part of my humanity recoiled in horror, pleading to resist the madness. But that voice grew fainter as the wild claimed me fully. I was more beast than woman now. Until one afternoon, a glint of color caught my eye once more. A bloom this time untouched by flame or decay. Holding my breath, I crept forward on all fours. Before me swayed a lady's slipper orchid, its bulbous pouch flawless. I blinked back tears as I reached out a claw-tipped hand to graze its delicate veins. Memories of my past self flooded through me, of the woman I had been before the wild consumed me. I glanced down at the torn rags barely clinging to my filthy body, at my blood-encrusted hands and ragged nails. The orchid's beauty anchored me briefly back from the brink of insanity. But even as I beheld it, the vines and branches warped in my vision once more into gnarled hands, the sunlight breaking through the leaves forming watchful eyes upon me. I reeled back, screeching as the peace of the flower gave way to the untamed madness still lurking within me. There was no coming back from the wild's embrace. Rocking on hands and knees, I let loose a jagged, inhuman howl that echoed out over the ancient forest. The creatures shrank from the unearthly sound. For the first time, the woods held its breath, and I was the monster in its midst. The primordial trees loomed higher as I sank lower, losing coherent thought to animal terror and instinct. I belonged to the wild now. It lived within me, roots coiling around my pounding heart. At last, I collapsed onto the soft, leafy bed of the forest floor and surrendered wholly. When dawn came again, I would awaken to hunt. And so I would survive, lost forever in the merciless, bewitching thicket.